I've written down here a sequence. Has a first term, second term, and goes on forever. I could also be interested in what happens if I take this sequence, which is a list of numbers, and instead of just listing them, I tried adding them all up. As in, I was going to take the first term, and I was gonna add the second term, and add the third term, and add the fourth term, and continue adding them up forever. Well, we might start wondering, like, does this notion even make sense? Does there a question of convergence? If I keep on adding things, does it add up to some number? There's a really big uh, analysis of what goes on here that's treated in calculus. But for our case, we're gonna be most interested in what happens if out of this infinite sequence, we just choose to add up some finite number of them. So for example, maybe what I'm interested in in some problem is just not adding the entire sequence, but I wanna take a three plus a four all the way up to adding up a nine. And that's the group that I want to sum up. Well, this thing here is, if all of these are integers, just gonna be some other integer. Now, we have a formalism, a new set of notation, because I don't wanna to have to write all of these down, and I chose A9 mainly because I was getting bored typing, but in an actual problem, maybe A9 here is supposed to be a, a million, and that you've got this really, really large number of things that you're adding up. So I want some notation that can express this very long list of things in a really nice, short way. So the way I'm gonna do that is something called summation notation. And what we're gonna begin with is just some sum, and I want you to note here that I begin on an nth term, and then I go to the nth plus one, the nth plus two, I keep on adding up, and then I end at an nth term. So I go from an nth term to an nth term. And then, the way I'm gonna make a shorthand for this is this notation here, which looks a little bit weird if you haven't seen it before, but this symbol here is called a big sigma, but I usually just say it's the sum. And we have a couple different things. First of all, down on the bottom, there's the m. That was my starting point here, right? So I've got the m, which is my starting point, and then I go up to the n, which is my finishing point. So it's like start at m, go up to n. I'm taking the sum of the AKs, where AK is like the generic K term in my particular series that I'm summing up. I use series for sum and sequences for a list. And then the way I write it is I, I say that my index variable, that K, the K is the one that's changing. This is thought of as the K starts at M and goes up to N, and I'm summing up all of the AKs in that region from the M up to the N. So here, the AK is thought of as that generic kth term in my sequence. Okay, so let's see how we might run this out in an example. Uh, I want to keep with our familiar example of AK being the minus one to the K, three K. And then what I'm gonna do is I want to try to compute this thing. I'm just making one up at random. I'm gonna take the sum and I'm gonna do k equal to how about two up to four of the ak. And I wanna try to sum this thing up. Well, what we can do here is, okay, let's do the a2. That's my first term starting at two. Then I add the a3, and finally I'm gonna go up to the a4. So those are my terms, a2, a3, and a4. And then we'd seen previously what these terms were. Like if I wanted to do the a2, that's k equal to two. So minus one squared, it's gonna be a plus one. Three times two, so this is gonna be six. And then the next term is minus nine. And then the next term after that is going to be plus 12. And this looks like six and 12 is 18 minus a nine. This looks like it's gonna have the value of nine. So in other words, there's a lot of fancy notation to do a sum with only three things. The point is to deal with ones that are much more than three, but we can see this in a simple example. The sum from two to four of this particular sequence is gonna be this expression, and we can add them up, and it gets to the value of nine. We can do much the same thing with products. For example, if I have some sequence, I could be interested in multiplying together a bunch of consecutive terms in my sequence. So for instance, suppose I wanted to start at the mth one 
and I wanted to end at the nth one, I could just say what's this product of all the sequential terms between m and n. And then my fancy notation, my product notation for this is almost exactly the same thing, but where before I used a capital sigma to denote sum, here I'm going to use a capital pi to denote product. So this is my notation. It's a pi symbol, but when I write it in this way, I just say it's the product. Where I start at the m, and I end at the n, and I'm pr taking this product of all the generic ak's where, where that k ranges between the m and the n. So that's my notation here. And I can likewise take that same example that we've been doing a few times now, the ak equal to the minus 1 to the k times 3k, and I could take now this time the product of a bunch of different numbers. How about k equal to 1 up to 2, just to keep our lives simple, of a k. The first a k is going to be the value of 3. And the second a k, excuse me, of minus 3. And the second a k is going to be the value of 6. And so this product is going to be equal to minus 18. And likewise, for the most part, what we're really interested in practice is much larger product than just two terms. We wouldn't bother with notation if we only cared about two terms. But the notation generalizes to a very large number of terms. There's a special subcase of product notation that's important enough in its own right that we actually give a whole new notation for it and call it factorial notation. And this is when I'm taking the product of a bunch of terms, but I'm specifically looking at the sequence a k equals k. That is that sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That is the sequence that I want to look at. So the product of the first n terms, if I want to use my old notation, I can write it like this. I can say that it is the product where my a k here is just a k equal to k. The first term is just 1, the second term is just 2, the third term is just 3. So the a k here is being replaced with k because it's a very specific sequence. And then I'm going from k equal to 1 up to k equal to n. This particular multiplication is defined to be factorial. And the other notation for it, our short shorthand for it, is going to be an n. And then I put a little exclamation mark. And the exclamation mark means this particular product. So for example, if I wanted to compute, say, 4 factorial, I'm going to say that this is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, or if I want to do it the other way around, which for some reason seems to be how it's most often represented, so I'm going to actually do it the other way around. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 times 4, so 24. And that is going to be 4 factorial. There's one sort of weird special case that I have to note, which is what happens if we take 0 factorial? And you might be tempted to think, oh, Trevor, it should be zero. But notice that in this particular sum, you start at one, two, th there is no spot for zero here. So this is actually defined a little differently. It's defined to be equal to one. So for a positive integer, n factorial is this thing. For the integer zero, factorial is defined to be just zero factorial is one. By the way, one of the reasons why we adopt this convention is that in the future we're going to connect this factorial notation to probabilities. And we'll ask questions like, how many different ways are there that I can pull out some number from a bag that has all the numbers between 1 and n? And then the notion of zero factorial is going to correspond to the idea that there's precisely one way where you can choose nothing. You just choose nothing. So there should be counted one way to choose nothing, and therefore it's going to be defined in this kind of bizarre and, and strange way. But nonetheless, this is our factorial notation.